So this is the Falconize RX18TD and it's a 100 watt flexible LED light mat. It's part of a larger lineup of lights from Falconize that come in various sizes as well as single or bicolor models and they also now make RGBWW versions of this and all their other lights. You can purchase various different kits of all the models and the kit I purchased retails for around £339 in the UK. So first up, what do you actually get with the light itself? Now, as I mentioned, there are various different kits that contain slightly different things, but the kit I purchased comes in a nice soft case that includes the light mat itself, along with its ballast and mains power cable. It also contains an X bracket for mounting the light to a stand like I've got here. There's then a light stand adapter that fits to the X bracket. You also get a soft box, a layer of diffusion, a gen ball style diffusion, and a grid. So overall, it's a pretty complete kit that gives you everything you need to start using the light straight away. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it's a 100 watt light, so you can run it via V-mount battery, and with a 98 watt V-mount, you get a little under an hour of runtime, um, but that's at full power. So the light fixture itself measures 18 by 24 inches, and it weighs around 0.6 kilograms, and it's only about two centimeters thick. So it's a really lightweight, compact source that you can rig very easily without any heavy duty grip equipment to pretty much anywhere you need it. I've gaffer taped it above a doorway, I've rigged it into cars before. If you want to use the light as more of a traditional LED panel, you can just rig it to a stand like I've got here. Um, and to do that, you use the included X bracket, which slots into the four corners at the back of the light. And then you attach that X bracket to the included baby pin adapter, which then sits onto the baby pin on the top of the C stand. And it just functions as you'd expect with any normal LED panel. That actually brings me on to one of my main gripes with this light, and it's not actually with the light itself, it's with the included light stand adapter. Um, it really affects how you can position the light because you can't tilt it downwards, you can only tilt up. So it makes it a bit awkward for positioning the light, but that can be alleviated by using a boom arm with your C-stand rather than just mounting it directly onto the stand itself. So, as I mentioned earlier, to power the light, you have two options. You can run it via mains or V-mount battery. For the V-mount battery option, it's really easy. You just attach the V-mount directly to the ballast, and you're good to go. For mains power, you've got a mains 13-amp power brick with a mains cable that can then clip directly to the ballast using a little V-mount adapter that wraps around the power brick. So that's really clever and it keeps it all nicely contained as one unit, so you've not just got cables all over the place. So onto the ballast slash control box, it has a little LCD screen that shows you both colour temperature and intensity, and this light is actually dimmable down from 100% all the way to 1%, so you've got a nice gradual dimming curve, which is really helpful to set the level of exposure you want. As I mentioned before, the RX18 is a bicolour light with its colour temperature ranging from 3000 to 5600 Kelvin, which isn't the most expansive range of colour temperatures, but it's perfectly adequate and it's fine for most use case scenarios. That brings me on to one of my favourite things about this light, it's how it handles its bicolour setting. With a lot of bicolour lights, you only get half power at 5600 or 3200 Kelvin, because only half of the LEDs are on. With the RX18, that isn't the case. Because the LED chips are set to 3000 and 5600 Kelvin, that means to create daylight or tungsten at 32 and 5500 Kelvin, you need to mix both sets of LEDs. So if I set the light to 5600, you can see that only half of the LEDs are on. So now if I take it down to 5550, you can see that the tungsten sets of LEDs have come on as well. So that, that means the colour temperatures that sit between 5600 and 3000 use all of the LED chips, which is really useful because it means you're getting the full output of the light at the most colour temperature settings. As I said earlier, with a lot of lights, that's not the case. If you're set to daylight or tungsten, you're only getting about 50% output, but you can see if I flick it back, there's a decent boost in output when half the LEDs are off versus when half the LEDs are on. Having all of them on is giving you the full 100 watt power of this light. 
which is really, really useful. So now onto the softbox. Um, it's a really clever design that Velcros directly to the back of the light panel. And then you can add the grid or the diffusion by Velcroing it directly onto the inside of the softbox. There's also a different style of diffusion if you want. We've got this flat version that's mounted currently, but then there's also something that's a bit more like a gen ball. So if you wanted to put the light over the head of talent and then put the gem ball on it you've got this nice wrappy soft light now I don't really like the gem ball attachment that much because it's really fiddly to actually get it and put it together and get it mounted I much prefer the flat layer two hours later but as I said if you do want to sling it over the head of talent and have that really soft wrappy light that just falls everywhere beautifully the gem ball is really useful for that it's just a pain to get it on the light as you can see, I've added some Velcro to the four sides of the softbox. Now, this is so I can skirt the light if I need to. Um, I've got some bits of blackout material that I've then sewn some Velcro onto, and they just stick onto the sides of the light, and it's a ready-built skirt that's really easy to mount and take off, and it's then purpose-built for this light. Obviously, that's something I've done as a DIY thing, and it's not included, but it's a handy addition to make should you decide to buy this light. So overall, I absolutely love the Falcon Eyes RX-18. It's one of my go-to lights and it gets so much use um, because it's just so easy and so punchy. It's got really good color accuracy. Um, there's not many things I can fault with this light and if you don't have one and you're looking for a really versatile, but powerful LED, this is definitely worth taking a look at. So that's it for this video guys, I hope you found it useful, um, as always there are links down in the description for where you can buy this light, as well as similar offerings from Falcon Eyes, um, all the different kits and various sizes, um, but please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one guys. Thank you.